for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. So, I mean, if I can do anything that I want to do, right? I mean, let's just let's say I'm driving a car. And I'm on the street and I can go any direction. You ever did a bumper car? You're on a bumper car. You can, do, you can go any direction. That whole thing is wide open to you. I want to go this way. I can go that way. I can go this way, this, that, another. It's a little different when you drive an actual car, right? You want a restricted road. You know what I'm saying? Especially on one of them runways. You go down uh, the 215, and like you go to the west of the 215, you know what I'm saying? Way on the west side of town, that thing just gets down four different lanes. You got people swinging past going 60 miles an hour on the other side, no divider, right? That's a restricted way. I mean, you make one dollar, you, you turn it just like this. I mean, it's a little, it's a nice curve, right? And you got people shooting by going 60 miles an hour, no divider, no nothing. It's a little thin yellow line. At any moment, somebody could just be drunk, and just boom, that's it. Right? That's a restricted way. You got to make sure you stay. Right? You got to stay right in your place. You got in a bumper car. That doesn't matter. Right? And what happens to you when you're in a bumper car? You crash. That's the intention of it. Right? It's designed to make you bump into other people. Right? That's the difference of our walk. Right? Our walk has to be a restricted way. It's dangerous for us. Right? We can't just go and do it. Going to do. We have to keep ourselves restricted, keep ourselves in place. Otherwise, we mess around, be off, hit somebody, and that's it. That's lives crushed. That's people affected. Right? Our families, our friends, the people that we love. When the Most High God come, y'all don't even understand. When the Most High God, God come for us, you think He come for us? Or is He coming for the people around us? Who, I mean, what do you think happened when David sinned? David said he committed adultery, right? He got, he got, he got, uh, what's her name? Bathsheba. Bathsheba, right? He got Bathsheba. Called her up. That was another man's wife, right? Called her up. He slept with her. You know what I'm saying? This is back home. And then called the man. Called, called uh, uh, what's his name? Uriah. Called Uriah. And told him, hey, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and spend some time. He had the middle of the war. He called him back. He said, you know what? Go spend some time with your wife. Because he knew he got a appointment. He was like, yeah, if he spent some time with her, at least I can just say that's his you know what I'm saying? That's it, baby. He did that thing secretly. Nobody knew about it. What most high God do. He popped right up and was like, okay. You did it secretly, I'm going to do something to you openly. David lived, though. David, we read about David right now. Most high God, what did he say about David? I pardon your iniquity, but... What did he say about David, though? He said he only sinned in the matter of your eyes. I would have gave you even more had you not a deal with He you. told David he only sinned in the matter of... That's the only sin he... That's what he, our book has it written that. That's the only thing that David sinned about. He called David a man after what? His own heart. This is a good man. This is a man we honor in our book. Right? So his sin obviously didn't affect him. Let's talk about his children though. What happened to David's son that he had with that woman? He died. When he died? When he was born. Okay. What happened to his other sons? Uh, one of his sons raped his sister. Okay. The other son killed his son and raped his sister. Okay. Then the other son tried to kill him and take the kingdom. That's real rough right there. Keep going, though. What happened to his sons? Absalom died. Okay. Uh, what happened to Solomon? Absalom died. Solomon died. Solomon, now, Solomon's the exception to the rule, y'all. Solomon became a king. One of the greatest kings. He get honored, too. What happened to him at the end? Solomon had his kingdom ripped away. You think the Most High God coming for us? He sat there and told us. He, grab, me, uh, grab Exodus, because we weren't paying attention. It was Exodus, uh, what I want? Exodus chapter 20. What I want? Verse. Verse. Probably Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Seemed like it's too low, so maybe 6. Exodus chapter 20, what I want? Mm. It'll be verse 6, verse 8, maybe. Uh, 5. 5? It's Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Watch what he say. This book here. This is the most high guy. This book. Watch what he say. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God, and a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation to them that hate me. Why are you just going to say, I'll kill your butt? You bow down 
to another guy and I'll kill your butt. He said, no, that's all right. You do it. I'm a business thing, iniquity. Oh, you popped and you did it? Oh, don't worry. Your son to get it. That's how he lined it up for us. That's how he does it. When we look into our world, we can't just think about, all right, well, you know, I'm just going to you know, do this. You know what I'm saying? We good. That thing going to affect us. It's going to affect us all. It's going to affect us in this room. It's going to affect our family. It's going to affect the people we love. Because when the Most High God come after us, he's not coming after us individually. He's coming after our people. He's coming after what we love. Right? When uh, when we messed up. Right? The pride, of our, the pride of our nation was what, T? This thing that we built right here, I mean, this was nice. This was nice right here. This, we built a little tent and everything. That thing was nice. After that, King Solomon put together, he put together a whole temple for us. That was the pride of our people. You from Judah? That's the pride of our people. So if we start acting up, what do you take from us? Temple. That's God's temple. So if we start acting up, we're like, right, I got something for y'all. Chop that thing right on down. Brought it back, we act up again, chopped it down again. What are you looking at? You, man, you think I care about a temple? Okay, yeah, y'all worship me there. That's cool. But y'all not doing what I say. Oh, that thing can go. You think if he takes his own temple out of the way, he think, you think he going to spare some of our loved ones? He ain't sparing none of our stuff. He don't care nothing about that stuff. The only thing he care about is our souls. So why we don't care about our souls? Why we don't have that same care about our souls? Why can't we align ourselves to do what the Most High God says? Constantly. Effort. It takes it. Just put the effort in. We have to stick with it. Otherwise, we're done out here. And our family, our friends, the ones that we love are going to be done out here. We can't afford it. We got to be able to put ourselves in a position where we can stand strong on what the Most High God gave us. That's what we learned this law for. That's what we open up the book for. When we open up the book, it gives us understanding. You grab uh, John chapter uh, 6, verse 44. I want 45. John chapter 6, verse 45. Man, got a book full of just letting us know we give us good to us. Don't y'all know this man to cut us off? At some point, the most I got to be like, yeah, that's it, though. All right, you good. That's it. You done enough. You good. You good. You like where you at. You all right. We can't risk. We can't play that game with him. We don't know when the man going to cut us off. We all done did enough. Me included, man. That stuff is a, we got we to gotta make sure we... I make sure we get this stuff together. We ain't got that much time left. We, you know what I'm saying? We went over all the revelation. We look at all this stuff. We know what's about to happen in this place. We ain't got time to be playing with these people. We mess around and get caught up in with these people. You know what I'm saying? Get caught up in the stuff that these other people are doing. Man, we can't be like these people. We got to stand separate. That way we can help some of these folks out. Who these people going to look at? Who do you, you look out in this world, who these people got? These people believe it's three gods. And at the same time, believe that, that those three gods are one. How in the world are they going to know something about God? Another group, of, another group of these people believe, if I blow myself up, I get 15 virgins. 15 virgins. First of all, you're a sicko. You got other people, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Got way more women than that. So you gotta die and build yourself up to get 15 virgins? <laughs> that dang crazy. That dang crazy. I, I this is a dude named Papa T. You know what I'm saying? Back in the hood. Dude named Papa T. I tell you what, I don't know if they're virgin. Yeah, we want a 15 though. You know what I'm saying? It's like you can do, I mean, if let me see. All I gotta do is be a pimp or blow myself up. Blow me, either way you want to hell. It don't matter. If, if, if hell ain't even a picture. We know that that you are mad, you going to hell either one of these. But I mean, do I want to blow myself up, get 15 virgins? Or maybe get, you know what I'm saying, 15 used ones, maybe 20 used ones, you know what I'm saying, and I can be a pimp. I'm just saying, I mean, if you're going to do it, I don't know why you're going to blow yourself up and do it. There's a whole lot of ways to be a sinner out here. I just say, be, be practical. If you're going to be a sinner, just do that thing where it'll work out the best for you until you go to hell. Right? You better get your money's worth. That's crazy. But they're supposed to be telling us about God. I'm going to build myself up. All right. That make a whole lot of sense. I'm running planes and chopping down people. They're running cars into people. 
over in Europe and France and all this stuff, just running big old bands in the people, just mowing people over because they feel like by doing that, they get some type of justification with God. Then their counterparts to kind of turn around and say, no, 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 Islam is a peaceful religion. Stop all that lies. Ain't no peaceful religion. You ain't even read your book. I read your book. I know it ain't peaceful what it's talking about. My book ain't peaceful either. I ain't about to lie on it. You ain't about to see it. No. What the most high God gave us, excuse me, what the most high God gave us is a is a peaceful way. It's peaceful for me. You know what I'm saying? That ain't gonna be peaceful for you. I don't know about y'all. You know what I'm saying? That thing gonna be peaceful for me, for y'all. That thing fire and war. It's uh John chapter six, give me verse forty five. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. He said, it's written in the prophets. When it's talking about the prophets, what is it talking about? It's talking about the law of the prophets. All right, it's talking about the prophets. It's talking about the books. It's talking about the Old Testament. It's talking about the scripture. He said, it is written in the prophets, and they what? And they shall be all taught of God. And they shall be all taught of Yah. Right? Therefore. Therefore. Therefore, every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father comes unto me. He said, every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father comes to me. It's two things you got to do. We got to hear and we got to learn. All right? We got to hear and we got to learn. With those two things, if we can accomplish those two things, by definition, we come to, to the Father. That has to be our goal. To hear the book, and not just hear the book, but to learn the book. Understand it, right? We hear something, and then we understand what we hear. If we do that, by definition, we'll come to the Most High God. All right? Let's go ahead and open up. Let's see if we can hear and we can learn something today. This is Exodus chapter uh, 32. We left off Exodus chapter 32, about verse 27, last week. So just to give a quick recap, Moses went up to the mountain. After Most High God spoke the Ten Commandments, people got scared. He is up there 40 days, 40 nights. People got scared again. They were looking like, man, I don't know if Moses is coming back. Aaron made a golden calf for him. And he said, here, this be your God. Right? In other words, worship. Right? The Most High Yah that brought you out of Egypt, this is him. He's this golden calf. Bow down to him. After Most High God just told him, don't make no other God. Right? So they bowed down to him. And Most High God was like, you know what? Moses, go ahead and go back down there and check on them people before I break out against them. Moses was like, man, what you talking about? I mean, man, just take it easy, don't kill them. Moses was like, God was like, I'm going to do it with all of them. I'll just make a new nation out of you. Moses was like, God, relax. Let me go find out what's happening. Moses get down there. He, he carrying the tablets of the Ten Commandments. He get down there and see, oh, it's worse than what I thought. He break the, temple, the tablets. He take the golden calf. He grind it up in the powder and then sprinkle it in the water. And he made the people drink the water. Right? He made him drink that brown water. All right? So then they were looking like, okay, and he said, who, who out here is for God? All right? And all the Levites gathered. And remember, we, we identified Moses was from the tribe of what? Levi. He was from the tribe of Levi. Right? So that was his brethren. That was his people that came by. They were like, yeah, we with you. Right? Aaron from the tribe of Levi. Moses from the tribe of Levi. So the Levites was already looking like, man, we run this thing. Right? We're my people. We run this thing. So when Moses out, we put a gun in him, that's us, all day. Levi's came, he said, kill every one of y'all, y'all brother, y'all neighbor. Whoever next, you just get, up, get rid of him, right? So he went down, you see it's cutthroat, right? Moses went from, no, nah, don't kill these people, God, to y'all get these people. Because he saw the sin and it bothered him, right? A lot of our problems, this stuff don't bother us. It don't bother us somebody come around sinning. We all right with it. It's like, oh, well, you know, that's just him. You think more walk around with that's just them. You can't have that attitude. I tell you what, nobody around you gonna get saved with that attitude. These people gonna run their mouth and be like, oh, you judgmental and all that stuff. Somebody gonna appreciate it. If they don't, it gets them away from you. You don't wanna stand. I mean, I mean, let's just say, let's just say right now, you know what I'm saying? Man bump into bust into the room, right? And he got a gun. He's like, man, I'm after Phil. He did something to me. I'm about to kill his butt. How many of y'all want to stand right next to me? Like, nah, it's, yeah, you have to hear him when you start shooting. Right? You know you have to hear him. Be like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know nothing about him. Nah, let him start shooting. Well, I'm going to stand right next to the target. That don't make no sense. I 
I know you see right here, and this is why I want to stand. Hey, how's it going? No, that's crazy. I ain't saying that to y'all. I want you to look. I want you either to get out of harm's way, or I want you to go over there with your harm. Right? That's two options that we're giving people. No in the middle. All the in the middle stuff is going to get you pulled in. All this, well, I know, but I just, I mean, that's still my brother, though, you know. I tell my brother all the time. My brother, it's a, uh, it's a heating pad on there. He probably won't be watching. It's a heating pad on there. I ain't talked to him yet. It's a heating pad. He gonna, you know what I'm saying? He gonna give it to my mom the day after Christmas. And say, yeah, you know, just tell him. Tell him it's a love gift. Yeah, okay. All right, that thing about to get re-loved gifted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Here you go. Back to it, you know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, what? what you, just, you can give me, just, why you wanna give me anything? Why are you waiting till this month to give me a love gift? You done love me all year, I hope. Oh, they do that with my kids. I'm like, it's real convenient. You want to give them something like today? Yeah, don't talk about it so my intelligence. You know what I'm saying? You keep that stuff. I don't want that stuff. I, I'm sitting here all week throwing away stuff from work. I'm saying, oh, yeah, that can go. You know, if you look at my closet right now, it's a, at the bottom of it, you got a whole bunch of this Christmas stuff. You know, well, that can go. Oh, yeah, some of the valuable stuff. No, that can go. That thing can go too. I kept the chocolate, so I ain't gonna lie. I, 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 I kept the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't about to. Now listen, ain't nothing. Now God ain't got to follow a little bit of chocolate now. <laughs> you, know, you know, the Christian be doing it. Now, like, not, God don't care about no Christmas tree now. Ain't a little chocolate now. You know, I just make sure anything that had a Christmas, like Santa or something like that, it's like, ah, oh, that guy thing got to go. This is a nice, clean, regular chocolate. I eat that thing real quick. You know what I'm saying? Before I throw it away. You know what I'm saying? But now, you, that, that's how you, you, these people will compromise you. And I'm still looking for A lot of times, it's like kids, right? We have our kids. And and what they do, my boy right now, right? He, he, he how old is he? 11 months? He 11 months, right? What he does is he'll reach out and touch something right in front of me, right? Looking at me the whole time, waiting for me to say no, right? He'll wait for me to say no. He knows already what I'm thinking. He knows I'm looking at him. And he'll look at it, and he'll go real slow and touch it, and wait for me to say no. Once I, as soon as I say no, I don't even have to get the old no out. I even, you know what I'm saying? He already, yeah, he starts back up because he's expecting it already. He already knows the no is coming, but at what point does it come? He's testing. You don't think that's what these people are doing? A lot of times these people, they're giving us stuff, and they're trying to, they're testing. Are you real? Do you have the integrity of the most I did? Do you have, do you live what you really preach about? Right? All this stuff, yeah, you say you love God, it's that another. But girl, are you real? I had some I had some co-workers today invited me to lunch, right? I never go to lunch with anybody. You know what I'm saying? They were like, oh, you never go to lunch. We start playing, you know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, y'all never invite me. So then they, they invited me. I was like, oh, now I got to go. So I went. I was like, right, yeah, it's that another. But they know why I don't go. They know I'm different. They know I'm messing around with their stuff. They doing all this cussing and all this stuff. And I'm just looking at them like, huh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Eat my food, you know what I'm saying? Like, why you not talking? This one know why I'm not talking. I'm like, yeah, man, y'all, y'all carry on, y'all do it. So I go back, start walking back. She's like saying, so you never going to lunch with us again, huh? I was like, oh, yeah, you said it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You said it. Sit my butt down. They know. But if I didn't have that, they would be disappointed. We have friends. They talk about us all day. I guarantee if we went back to them cussing, sleeping with women, doing all these different things, I guarantee they'd be disappointed. They talk less about us right now. Right? But they'd be disappointed in us if we did anything different. Because it's all just a test. People are, everybody's being lied to. We have lies coming in every single direction. Right? Every single direction. So you have to try to figure out what is going to stick. Who's really out here telling the truth? Only way you're going to figure that out is, I'm throwing everything against the wall. I ain't, they looking like, I'm not about to look dumb by accepting your religion. And then you end up being just like one of these other liars. So before I accept your religion... Let me make sure you follow. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to keep poking at you. And let me see if you stay true the whole time. Eventually, some of them, not all of them, but eventually some of them are going to be like, all right, I'm ready to change. Some of them are going to be too darn late. Most of God ain't even going to have it. But that ain't our job to figure out who's too late or not. Our job is to obey and be ready for when the people are ready. This stuff is important for us. This is uh, Exodus chapter uh, 32. Verse 27. Did we already read 27? This is Exodus chapter 32, verse 27. And he said unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, mm -hmm. Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp. 
and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor. Right? Every man his brother, his friend, and his neighbor. Right? Get your family member, get your friend, and get the people that's close to you. That's it. Keep going. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. Mm -hmm. And there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. All right? So 3,000. We had now, now just keeping in, keeping in scope, we had about a million people that came out. About 600,000 men, I think it was, that came out. All right? Not including women and children. Not including the, the women and children. You can imagine, it's, it's an easy million of us out there, right? Uh, that's that same bill, 3,000 of us died. Just like that. Right? We look at these things, the most high God make it good. Like we have to be able to see. Sometimes you gotta cut what they they have what they have to take, what they, what, they, what they use? A sword. A sword. What you do with a sword? I cut it. Sometimes you gotta cut these people off. Right? But you have to be able to see the end of it. Like if we look here in the beginning of the book, three thousand people die, right? Grab axe for me. How many people died? That what it say? Yeah. Okay. Grab Acts chapter two. Acts chapter two, maybe forty-two is what I want. Two, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Mm -hmm. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Mm-hmm. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Mm -hmm. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Mm -hmm. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. That's it? If that was 42, then give me 30. 30? Nah, give me, give me like 34. Uh, that ain't what you want. 28? Mm. Must be 28 what I want. Baptized? Mm, no. 28 ain't baptized? Mm -hmm. You in Acts 2? You might want... You want 41. 41? Yeah. Give me 40 then. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Watch this. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized in the same day. Uh -huh. There were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So we see in the back of the book, you got to start off with cutting these people off. You get, all, I mean, I'm sorry, you get to the front of the book, you got to start off with cutting these people off. You get to the back of the book, you see... The same amount of people was added on, right? Added on to what we call life, what, what's going to end up being life for us, right? But all, it's not the end of the world. We have to, we have to have that in mind. It's not the end of the world. We don't know what's going to happen. Don't get lying to yourself and say the people that you cut, going, that you cut off, going, all of them going to come back around. And this and that might not happen. Some of these people you cut off, they're going to be gone forever, right? But no matter what, we can't wager what these other people are going to do against our souls. You in an airplane, and that thing, they, you know what I'm saying, you got the lady, you know what I'm saying, I, I mean people rode the plane, y'all rode the plane, you rode the plane, hey, you rode the plane, right, when you was on the plane, you got the lady that talked, she always would talk that upper inflection and everything, thank you for joining Southwest Airlines, and I want you guys to know that all you have to do is, you know, pull out the seat tray, and it is there on your right. If you ever do it, then and then it's gonna fall from the top. This that no 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 no. So you do that, right? Then they're gonna tell you. Once the thing falls, you gonna secure it on your baby's face first so that your baby lives. And then after you secure it on your baby's face, then you put it on your face. Is that how they tell you? I guess. 
Heck no, that ain't how they tell you. They say put it on your own darn face first and then secure it on your baby. Then secure it on the person next to you. What sense it make? I mean, you sitting there, you, I mean, you suffocate. <laughs> and you trying to get it on your baby face, but you trying to get them first because you, I mean, you want to you make sure they're good. But you suffocating the whole way you do. And you can't quite get it on there, and then you die. Now, the baby dead because you couldn't get it on there fast enough because you were suffocating and you dead. What sense does it make? Even these folks got enough sense to be like, mm, trust me, just secure yourself first. Once you secure, then at least you have some, you know what I'm saying, energy to try to save the baby. Don't make no sense. Both of y'all dying. That's how the most high God is. Right? He's looking like secure your own. Save yourself. Work out, books say work out whose salvation? Your own salvation. Work out your friend's salvation? Your own salvation. Work out your mama's salvation. <laughs> your own salvation. Work out your wife's salvation. Your own salvation. That thing don't have nothing to do with me. I appreciate y'all. I really do. I really appreciate y'all. I can guarantee I'm not working y'all stuff out before mine. That don't make no sense. I love and appreciate every one of y'all. There's no way in the world, including my children and my wife, I'm working out their salvation before mine. I'm just out here doing whatever I want to do, and I'll be like, nah, but y'all y'all really need to get right. Ain't that what these hypocrites do to us? Nah, man, I support everything y'all doing, man. I'm, let me tell you something. That's good, man. That's good. They ain't saying they're trying to work out our salvation. Okay, I make a whole lot of sense. That's why I knew you ain't shit. That's the book just told you not to do that. He got to work out your own. He's going to mind your own business. That don't make no sense. Nah, nah, Tasha. I just, I mean, I'm just happy to see you doing good, Tasha. I just, you know, I'm going to get there. You know, you just, just keep praying for me. All right. You working out my salvation. We can't do that. We have to be able to secure ourselves, make sure we in it, make sure we keeping the faith, we holding the faith. Because the rest of these folks are, let these people do what they do. You know these people driving you to do wrong and pulling you in the wrong direction? Because these people, they do, they tell us to do that with business, right? If your friends don't support you, cut them off. Ain't that what they tell you? That ain't cool. Well, I get a whole lot of likes on Facebook right now. If I be like, you know what? If your friends don't believe in your dream and they don't support you, then cut them off. Right now, I can post it and I get a whole lot of likes. I'll be the man on, on, on Twitter right now if I say that. Flip it around. I'll be like, man, these people these people don't support you. The most I got in the way of the most I got. They don't encourage you to, to turn away from sin. Cut their butt off. Especially they call me just, that thing be crickets. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody touching that post. Twitter might not even show that thing to everybody else. You'd be like, let's just hide that thing. We ain't going to do it that thing. <laughs> These people don't play with no righteousness, but they use the same principles for wickedness. They use wise principles to do wickedness. Got to cut the wall. This is Exodus. Where we at? This is Exodus chapter uh, 22, 28. 32, verse 28. This thing book. Why these people make up stuff? We don't make up no stuff here, man. We just look at the book, man. What is the book trying to say to us? Let's, how, how can we do what it say? And it's not hard. It's not something that's not, it's not impossible. It's not strange. You let these people tell it, be oh, the law. Oh, I'm so happy that the law, I mean, oh, I'm so happy I didn't live in those times of the law because I would have been dead along. Because you're a sinner. Why are you saying bragging about you? How dead you would have been? You're a darn sinner. Law sound high to me. You dead right now. You dead dog walking. Ain't that what the book say? The book say you dead walking. Why are you saying talking about you would have been dead? You dead right now. That thing would have been easy to mind your business in the land. Man, you've been high as fuck. You would have all this foolishness going on. It'd be easy to mind your business in the land. Every time you turn around, you poor people begging for money and everything. Got a field. You got brothers and sisters that can't find jobs. None of this foolishness would be happening. It's these crooked people way. It's like we adapt to these crooked people way. We never like these people. They like stinking and carrying on. We as clean people. We adopted these people's stuff. Got our people addicted to crawfish and crab legs and all this nasty stuff that we're doing. We would never touch this stuff. If it's a play, turn around, somebody want to eat some darn pork. We would never would have did this stuff. Our stuff would have been way better. They're going to be way better than that. Can't even have no breakfast nowhere. Can't even eat bagel. I'll be trying to, you know what I'm saying, get a nice quick bagel. I'll just give me a bagel. You know what I'm saying? I'll just throw everything in it. Yeah, uh, I got, we have the sausage and the bacon, you know what I'm saying, sausage and bacon ham sandwich. Are you going to hold three of Goodness gracious. Just give me the egg. You know what I'm saying? Just, just leave it. Just put an egg on there. You know what I'm saying? You give me the biscuit and the egg, rub a little jelly on it. Make me feel like I'm doing something 
mama and my son. You know what I'm saying? Goodness gracious. I'm a pancake. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't even trust these people food. Keep going. This is Exodus chapter 32, verse 20. They tried to cover some ground. I'm doing a whole bunch of talk. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell on the people that day. There fell of the people that day about three thousand men. Mm -hmm. For Moses had said, "Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day." And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, "Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord." My fault. When they say consecrate, what y'all think? Set apart. Set yourself apart. Clean yourself. That's exactly what it means. He's saying set apart from your word. Read that again. Instead of saying consecrate, though, we know it say consecrate. I ain't trying to change what the books say, right? We know it say consecrate. But set, consecrate means to make something holy or set it apart, right? So instead of saying consecrate, when we hear consecrate, we don't think set apart, right? Set yourself apart. Watch this. Moses said, set yourself apart yourselves today to the Lord. Even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. So now he's saying, get yourself away from your brothers and the sisters. Even your brothers and sisters. And by doing that, he's going to bestow a what to you? A blessing upon you. You let these people tell it, how to get your blessing. I'm telling you what the book says. Get your butt away from these sinners, these people that's dragging us down, that keep us stagnant, that encourage us to do wrong. Get your butt away from them. Get away. Leave them alone. Don't touch them. Don't talk to them. Don't do nothing. Get them out of your phone. Get them out of your Facebook. I went to, let me tell you something. My wife, my boy, everybody testified to it. I go through my Facebook and unfollow the mess out of people. Let me tell you, my favorite feature of Facebook is the unfollow button. You go, look, this is all you got to do. You go to their page, you know what I'm saying? They got a little picture right there, their kids and everything. And you come down right at the middle, and that thing going to say follow. And it's going to have a check mark next to it. You see that check mark? You just hit right where that check mark is. That thing, you will drop down. You want to hit that thing and say unfollow. Bow. You have never seen nothing else from their darn page. Y'all still friends. Ain't nobody going to get tight. See, we know on like Twitter. No, not Twitter. Oh, Instagram. Instagram, you know what I'm saying? I get rid of people too. I unfriend the mess out of your butt. They come back a little bit later. I'm like, oh, you unfriended me. I was like, hey, you know. <laughs> And stuff you be posting a little wild for me. You know what I'm saying? Just, you, know what I'm saying? you can do what you want to do. I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? You know, for me, it's a little wild. I don't feel like having that conversation with everybody. Especially not on Facebook. I've got too many people on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Instagram is only like 50 people. So nobody like me on Instagram. But hey, brother, I like people. I don't want to have that conversation. That unfollow, they'll never know. They mind their business. I'm minding mine. And I never have to see what you're talking about. Cut these people out. You still got something good to say there? See what you're talking about? Right? You just won't see their negative stuff. You won't see their stuff. When I say negative, I ain't talking about somebody telling you that you're not doing well and all that. When I say negative, I'm talking about somebody that's encouraging you to do sin. For them, it's positive. They tell you how to get this money. That's positive to them. Right? For me, that thing ain't negative. Five dollars turning into 50. You got all these people. You see that? You got all these people online. They sitting there telling you, $20, right? You just give me $20. I'm going to turn it to $160. Now, how you going to do that? I mean, just give me $100, and I'll turn it into $400 by the end of today. Is that right? That sounds intriguing, right? It's like, okay, how you going to turn it? Because I got 100 I mean, I got $100 right now. How you going to do that? Why ain't nobody explaining it? Ponzi scheme. I mean, they just sit here and make it a fool. I mean, just, and then you, then you just read the comments. And whenever you see, y'all gonna still see it. One hundred dollars. I'm gonna turn it to four hundred dollars and start reading the comments. You got somebody, girl. They scared to make this money. I know. I made my money today. I'm looking like, what, what's the secret? Okay, tell us. Like, explain. What's the secret? You know what I'm saying? I'm excited. I'm looking at them like, you scared to make? I ain't scared to make my money. What you talking about? <laughs> you know tell me what the you know what I'm saying? Like, tell me how it works. Then I see some dude I respect, you know what I'm saying? He, you know what I'm saying? He broke it down. He was like, look, I'm going to lay it out for you. I mean, I was so excited. I was like, oh, finally, somebody about to explain this thing. I'm going to break it down for you. You know what I'm saying? It's not a pyramid scheme. What it is, is crowdfunding, right? 
he is like this, da 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 and so I'm just reading it, I get to the end, I was like, he really ain't told me nothing about it. I was like, he still haven't explained it, why? You know what I'm saying? So I just kind of thought about it, I was just looking at it, I was like, let me see, you got people who are promoting some way to turn $100 into $400, right? Now, see, some people say, all I need is four people to turn $100 into $400. So that means four people giving you $100, that equals $400. That's interesting. So that means you taking $100 from four people, and that's how you turn it into $400. So maybe you're going to tell those four people to get four other people to give them $400, and then they can tell the other. So I mean, let's just draw this out, because it ain't a pyramid scheme. Right? So you just got one person right here. Like for the office. And you got one, two, three, four right there. For all four of them got to find somebody else. So you got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I don't know, to me, that thing kind of looked like a I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure because I'm not like I don't know the definition of a pyramid scheme, but I'm just saying when you put it out, it kind of looked like a pyramid. But that's all right. That's how desperate our people are, right? We so quick to just I mean find money, and so now all the popular people they get their four hundred. That's that easy money for them because they popular. People trust them. They popular. Oh, don't this Susie down here ain't got no friends. But she like you a whole lot, so she believes you. And she gave her, she gave her four hundred. What happened when she can only find two people? I mean, she she gave her hundred. What happened when she can only find two people? But you gotta have four for it to cash out. Now she find two people. She got so you know her friends, the one but all you know they ain't got no. She didn't borrow it from her darn niece in her savings account. Her niece ain't got no darn friends with money. So niece is done. She's done, and three of these people over here done. And it's all off of their backs. All off our own people, our friends that we've promoted this to. Like, we're really doing something for them. What if all these people took the same $100 and they said, hey, you got a business, bro. Let's invest in your business. That's something that makes, you take the same $100 and that's something that makes sense. That's something that helps everybody. Everybody could win from that, potentially. It's still a risk, but it ain't this type of risk. It ain't a risk where Everybody at the top getting getting money off of the people at the bottom, off of the what we consider peons. We can't live like that. We can't keep falling for the people. This stuff is going to turn us against each other, even more so than we already turned against each other. Just trust the most high God. Stop trying to find a scheme. Work hard. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot in life. Can't be greedy out here in these streets. Let's get back to the book. I don't know how you got me talking about pyramid schemes. I mean, or something like one. This is Exodus chapter 32. Give me verse uh, 29, 20, 30. We're on 30. This is Exodus chapter 32, verse 30. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, You have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up to the Lord. No eventually I shall make an atonement for your sin. Mm -hmm. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Right, so now he's praying to the Most High God. He's like, Yeah, they sinned just like you said they did. And they made a god of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, and if not, block me, I pray thee out of thy book, which thou hast written. Right? So look at the heart of Moses. Moses was looking like, listen, just forget the people. They, they messed up. They did mess up. I didn't you got to forget these people, though. But even if you're not going to do it, I'll tell you what. Just take me instead. Block me out. Right? What else? And the Lord said to Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. He said, you know who I'm going to blot out of the book? The ones that sin. Moses running the night, he's like, man, look, I'll tell you what. Just, just go ahead and blot me out of the book instead of that. I mean, forget him. You know what I'm saying? But if you won't, then put it all on me. All right? Just, just put that thing all on me, and then, you know what I'm saying, we'll call it, we'll call it a day. We'll call it a day. You know what I'm saying? Y'all moved a little bit. It's all right, though, but, uh, you know what I'm saying? He said, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and block me out of the book, right? Go ahead and uh, grab Luke chapter 10. We're going to come back to, to Exodus, but grab Luke chapter 10. A lot of 
of people don't know. When we were worried about the reading Luke chapter 10, a lot of people don't even know. They listen to him, they wouldn't even know what he was talking about, where it come from. They think they know, but they don't really know. It's Luke chapter 10, verse 17. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, This is what Yahweh should have said to him. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all powers of the enemy. Uh -huh. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not. That he said, notwithstanding, don't rejoice in this. But he said, I give you all this power. But he's like, mm, but at the same time now, don't get so happy about that. Let me tell you what you should be getting happy about. Rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So what do you think? What do you think? What do you think Yahweh sure was talking about? Names written in heaven? There's no way you know what Yahweh sure was talking about unless you read Moses. That's what Moses was saying. He was like, go ahead and block me out of your book. Most like God told him, I ain't going to block you out of the book. You know what I'm saying? The person that sinned, that's the one I'm going to block out of the book. I ain't blocking you out. I'm blocking out the sinner. Right? So Yahweh sure came along. He was like, look, I better be happy that your name is written in heaven. He talking about that same book. People read Yahweh sure, they just read like, oh, name written in that. They don't know what he's talking about. Oh, my, see, my name is engraving on the stone in heaven. Yeah, okay. You don't know what you're talking about. He talking about a book. Go ahead, give me Revelation 20. How you know Revelation 20 talking about and you ain't never read Moses? Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most... Wait, hold on, I'm 21, my bad. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face... The earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And the what were open? And the books were open. Okay. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things that were written in the books according to their works. That's it. He said, your name written in the book. And you're good. Your, your name written in the book of life, you're good. Most of God said, I ain't going to blot your name out. I'm blotting out that center name. Right? It says, well, I'm going to end up blotting out. Let me grab uh, Romans 15. I just want y'all to see, we look at all these references. Where do you think these references came from? How you going to know this stuff if you don't know Moses? These people talking about the Old Testament done away. They don't have the foundation to even understand what they're talking about. It's our, our culture that we're reading about. It's life for us. He got graham cracker. I want a little graham cracker too. <laughs> it's Romans chapter 15, verse 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. He said, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good, for edification. Watch this. For even the Messiah pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Right? He said, even the Messiah didn't please himself. Y'all sure you think he came down pleasing himself? No, the reproaches of us who reproached the Most High God fell on Y'all sure. He buried our sins. Right? He told the most high God, you know what? They, he tried to do like Moses was talking about. Moses was like, man, not, 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 not them. Just put it on me. He told Moses, no. Y'all sure though, he was like, man, just put that thing on me. Right? Just put it on me. Right? Y'all sure he let him take it, because that was a righteous man. That was a man who never sinned. Moses had sin. Right? He knew that if I brought Moses out, bro, Moses can't get back. That's done. You know what I'm saying? I brought Moses out. Ain't no way for him to get back. However, Yahushua, 
If I block him out, he back in there. He ain't never did nothing wrong. He earned life. You know what I'm saying? I got to give him life regardless. I can block him out. His name will end up right back in there. We good. Right? So y'all should end up taking it on for us. What do you think you were reading about Moses? We were talking about y'all sure. Right? The whole book got to testify to, uh, of the Messiah. All right, grab, uh, grab, uh, grab Mark for me real quick. We'll grab Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. It's Mark chapter 12, verse 29. And Yahshua answered him, the first of all the commandments is... That's 29? Yeah. Give me uh, verse 28. And one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together, and perceived that he had an an had an answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? All right, hold on, hold on, what we got right there. Right? This is going to be this is going to be real important. Go, go back to Romans chapter 15. Watch this. What verse we leave off? Four. Go ahead, keep reading. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Uh-huh. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to the Messiah, Yahushua. Uh-huh. What's it? That ye may with one mind and with one what? Mouth, one mind and one mouth. One yes, mind, one mouth. Glorify God even as the Father of our Lord, Yahushua, the Messiah. Uh-huh. So one mind, one mouth, glorify God. Keep going. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as the Messiah also received us to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Now I say that Yahushua the Messiah was a minister of the circumcision. All right? Now you good. All right? So with one mind, one mouth, glorify one man. All right? One mind, one mouth, we glorify one man. All right? These people still talking about a trinity. All right, go uh, go back to 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 uh, to Mark. Mark chapter twelve, verse twenty-eight or twenty-nine. Now watch what he say. Watch for the first. He asks him, "What's the greatest commandment?" Watch the first thing that come out of the darn mouth. And Yahshua answered him, "The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. That's it." Right? You see the emphasis there? Our God is one. But these people still talk Trinity. Right? It's, it, 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 it's a, it, the reason why people feel that they can do that is because they haven't understood the law. They haven't understood the foundation. They haven't understood the prophets. So they feel that they can go anywhere with it. They look at it and be like, no, nah, see, it's not just, it's three. It's three. You got the Father, you got the Son. You got the Holy Spirit. Right? Just like when he told us, he said, with one mind and with one mouth. Does that mean you three? You got yourself, you got your mind, and you got your mouth. No. He's naming different members of one body. Right? That's all working together for one purpose. Same thing with the Most High God. The Most High God is one. That's why when it comes back, he's going to tell you. Even if you go to uh, go to First John chapter five, First John chapter five. First John chapter five, verse six. This is he that came by water and blood, even Yahushua the Messiah. Not by water only, but by water and blood. Uh -huh. It is the spirit that bears witness, because the spirit is truth. 
Mm-hmm. But there are three that bear record. There are how many? Three that bear record in heaven. They like that. It's three that bear record in heaven? Let's hear it. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Uh-oh. There are the Trinity. I mean, you ask, you ask them. Show me where the Bible has a Trinity. Show me where you can find a Trinity in the Bible. They're going to take your butt right here. There's another place they might take you, but we're going to start here. They're going to take your butt right here. So, read that again. There are three that bear record. There are three that bear witness. That is true now. It does say three that, bear, that bears witness. And where? That bears record in heaven. Okay. The Father. The Father, that's one. The Word. The Word, that's one. And the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit, that's three. But what does it say next? And these three are one. I got that. See, now we spend all our time. I told you, find the Trinity for me. And it's going to tell you, you need three or what? Are one. Whole time it's going to come back to being one. Whole time it's going to come back to being one. Let me show you the other place they're going to tell you. Matthew chapter 28. <laughs> Excuse me. Matthew chapter 28. It's Matthew chapter 28. Verse 18. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. This Trinity stuff be messing these people's mind up. Yeah, three separate persons, one God. Yahshua came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Uh-huh. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. In the name of the one Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy Ghost. That's three. Right? That is three. He said, baptize them in three names he gave. The name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. That's another place. Go ahead now tell you, see, that's three. That's the Trinity. Those are three separate persons. He's telling you to baptize them in three separate names. Is he really? I don't know. Let's look. Let's go to Acts. It's Acts chapter 2, verse 37. This is Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Real quick, let's see if we can uh, just shoot through a few places in Acts and understand what he's talking about. Now he told him, Baptize them in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. That gives us three separate persons, right? That would make us a trinity. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahushua the Messiah, for the remission of sin. He must have read it wrong. It said, it said, baptize every one of you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, right? Read it for me one more time. Be baptized every one of you in the name of Yahushua the Messiah for the remissions of sin. One name. One name they gave. Yahushua, he told he's like, I'm a, you, y'all need to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When it comes time to them do actually what he said, one name. Because the three are one. It's just Yahushua. That's it. Everything we look at is Yahushua. Right? What's the name of the Father? Yahushua. What's the name of the Son? Yahushua. What's the name of the Holy Spirit? Yahushua. But you got Catholics that sit there and dunk your butt three times in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, making a fool out of themselves. All because they haven't taken the time to look at the book and he said, the Lord thy God, that's one. That's one Lord. I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. What well, I was here to dunk you three times for? The book already told me that you won. You just can't count. He tell you you won, you dunk him one time. But these people make such a big deal of three separate persons. When the book is already telling you one is not separate. I'm one. In other words, I'm trying to make it clear to you there is no separation. There's one. But y'all want to make it no, 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 the Trinity is three separate parts. I was like, that's where y'all go. That's where y'all go wrong. 
I was like, no, he really doesn't like to believe that garbage. I was like, bro, you gotta get out of that stuff. Give me Acts chapter 8. Bro, I want 8. Mm, give me Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, give me verse 1. Acts chapter 19, verse Past that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Why, we ain't never even heard of the Holy Ghost you speak of. What are you talking about receiving it? And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Mm hmm. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Yahushua the Messiah. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Yahushua. Mm -hmm. They were baptized in the name of who? The Lord Yahushua. Right? They got baptized on the Yahushua. One name. He said, what, who, who was baptized? John's? Oh, you got to be baptized under the name Yahushua. He said, you didn't do it wrong. You was under the wrong name. John ain't the right name. Then he only gave him one name. He didn't give him three. One name. Acts 4. Watch it. Then we can move on. Acts 4, verse 10. Remember, this is right after Yahushua died. All the baptism we see. Name of Yahushua. You're not going to see any other name. Because that's the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is the three records. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Yahushua, of Na the Messiah of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. Mm -hmm. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Mm -hmm. Neither is there salvation in any other. For Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is no other name given among men where we can be saved. Period. I ain't gonna give you more than one name. He told you it's the only name that's gonna work for you. Y'all better come out of this foolishness talking about some trinity. You mess around and go to hell believing this crazy stuff. Believing that three gods. At the same time, three separate gods are one. That don't even make no darn sense. You have to believe they're one or you're not. That's crazy. Ain't nothing separate. The whole point of him telling you it's one because he's trying to show you there's no separation. Grab Hebrews for me. It's Hebrews chapter uh, 12. Right, get back on court. I'm on a little bit of a tangent. It's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Watch what he said. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, uh -huh. let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us. God will lay aside this sin. And that that sin, we got to get that sin off my I think wear it down. I think wear it down. We can't run. He, he gonna, what are you going to tell us to do? He said, let us lay aside every weight. Then what else? Lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us. Uh-huh. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. He said, look at this thing like a race. You ain't, you ain't about to get out there and compete in a race and you got all your weights on top of you. I mean, let's say you run with, like, a, a, a weighted vest on, you know what I'm saying, to just, you know what I'm saying, to be up for your exercise. 
When it comes down to compete, it ain't like you're going to wear that thing. You're going to take that off so you can be a little bit lighter and give yourself a better advantage. He's like, yeah, okay, you lay aside all this sin. This stuff weighing you down. All right, keep going. Looking unto Yahushua, the author and finisher of our faith. There you go. I just wanted to get back to blotting out the book, right? He's the author and the finisher of our faith. They call him the author because he can write our names in that book, right? That makes him the author and the finisher. He said when he writes that thing, done. Right? He's the author and the finisher. That's it. That thing done. Right? That's what Moses. That's what Moses was talking about. Everything else we see in the book, that's where it came from. It came from what Moses was talking about. He said, man, you know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and block me out the book. Most of God said, no, nah, the one who sinned, I'll block them out. God was sure said, oh, that's all right. I'll write them in there. It was all meant to come back to Yahweh Shua. Let's go back to uh, Exodus chapter 32. I think we left off at 33. It's Exodus chapter 32, verse 33. Let's try to finish this chapter up. said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Mm -hmm. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Mm -hmm. Behold, my angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. He put that darn plague on them. You see, he didn't give them a path. Alright? He said, don't worry about it. In the day I visit them, I'm going to visit their sin. In other words, your brother ain't getting by Right? Y'all buds ain't getting by. Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all buds ain't getting by. Sure enough, sure enough, he sent that plague on them. Start getting their butt. All right? We see that's our God. Well, that's the point of us reading all this. We want to understand God's, in his integrity, his character. Right? How does he handle things? Because that lets us know where can we, where, 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 where can, when we, what do we expect when we read the book? Right? When we read the New Testament, are we expecting the right things? Are we looking at it the right way? Are we interpreting it correctly? By reading the Old Testament, you look, that's what we hear. Right? If you only read the New Testament, you can play denying. Like, nah, I don't think that's what that means. That don't sound like the Christian God. Right? You read the Old Testament, you're like, yeah, no, nah, that's him. That's him, flat out. He gave us enough examples in the Old Testament. It's pretty clear. New Testament is assuming you already know that. Right? It's assuming you already know this about God, so it gives you less detail and focuses on key points. Focuses on new criteria, your new details, right? He, he just told me, you already know, you already know who God is, right? That's the assumption. I, I already know who God is, so let me just tell you some some of the stuff you don't know, right? You take some of that stuff you don't know, you take that thing the wrong way, you get to run it left with it, all because you never knew who God was, you never knew a character, you never know what, what his expectations are, you never knew how he handled situations, you never know how seriously he took things, right? That's what we have to seek to do is try to get that understanding, make sure that they seek deep into it. And once we're seeing deep enough, that'll help us keep ourselves aligned, and keep ourselves boxed in. You know what I'm saying? Our walk is like, you know what I'm saying? Like this is this is us. You know what I'm saying? And then this is Yahweh Shua. Right? And we good. You know what I'm saying? We good. We can be we can be anywhere in here, in this circle. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of times we want to live on the edge. You know what I'm saying? We want to just get as close as possible to the end. You know what I'm saying? If we if we if we if we keep our law and we understand our law, you know what I'm saying? That gives us this type of a circle. We in here. And this is Yahushua out here. Right? We can operate here that'll keep us from falling out. We out here, you going to hell. Period. No question about it. You know what I'm saying? You here, you good. You here, you good. You here. You real good. You're going to be great in the kingdom. You here. You here. You might be least in the kingdom. Right? You don't get in there, though. You out here, your brother going to hell. We can't live like this. We can't say, well, technically, I mean, technically, I can celebrate Christmas. I mean, it's not a sin. That's true, though. True. It's like, it's true. Technically, you can go give some gifts to people on Christmas, and you can take some gifts. You ain't going to go to hell for that. Right? Ain't, ain't no book. I can't tell you going to hell for it. Let me, let me clarify I can't find nothing in a book that would say, because you exchanged gifts on Christmas, you're going to hell. But you know what's going to happen? You get yourself in that, that situation. You guess who you're, you're going to be around when you're doing that? You're going to be around people that know the book or don't know the book? Don't know. 
So now, Christmas, all innocent. You know, that turned into cussing. That turned into lying. That turned into cheating on your taxes. That turned into all these different things. Then guess what that turned into? Right out here. Because that's where you was living. You living right here on the edge. One little slip up, one little, little mistake, put you right out there. We can't live like that. Right? Seems to be great. You make a mistake here. I mean, let's say you living on the edge of the law and you make a mistake. Guess what that lends you? Still in the kingdom. Right? We just want to restrict ourselves. Right? We have the freedom. We have the freedom. We can move anywhere in here. That's a whole lot of freedom. But we want to restrict ourselves to keep ourselves safe, safe for us. Right? That's why we learn this stuff. That's why we look at it. All them laws we went over the last uh, last few weeks, them things coming back, we're about to go over some more laws. I ain't going to get into them next week, but chapter 34, we're going to get into some more commandments. Right? Then as we get through Exodus, a little bit we're going to kind of start shooting through Exodus because it's going to start telling us about the temple and putting the temple together. I mean, uh, putting the, the tabernacle together. We're going to shoot through. Then we're going to get to uh, Leviticus, and it's going to tell us about all the sacrifices. I think chapter 1 through 8, break down all the different sacrifices for us. So we're going to put them up on the boards and we're going to try to understand them. Right? Then some more commandments going to come along. And we're going to set up our priests and we understand how that stuff works. We're going to understand all this stuff and we're going to look at it and try to get to why does God operate how he operates. And after we get to that, we're going to read the New Testament and be like, okay, I know who we're dealing with. Right? Any questions? Let's pray out.